الرحمن الرحيم my little woodworking workshop it's looking nice and clean it's time to get it dirty build my first woodworking non-workshop project that means something that I can use not in my workshop but in my house now first thing that I needed is that I have a couple of rock crawlers RC cars that are always sitting on different shelves and tables and taking up a lot of space so I thought I will build a floating wall mounted shelf that I can use to put all the crawlers arrange them nicely on that shelf I'm gonna build that with leftover wood some of the new pieces of wood and some of the leftover wood and some of the pallet wood to build the floating shelf I had some ideas in my head and I needed to put them on the paper so enjoy my awesome drawing skills <laughs> So I went ahead and drew some designs and BAM! Yes, that's it. So let's go for that design. First off, I needed to cut the uh, wood stalks accordingly. I believe I went around 85 to 95 centimeter for the longest part of this. Two pieces of wood needed to be joined together and then I had to form a slope, double slope on top, for which I went 45 degrees and my uh, two-in-one uh, the angle ruler that I bought off Banggood did the job after that I had to square up my miter saw yes the squareness is really important throughout this project now the wood pieces are cut and the shape that I have drawn is coming along very well I also needed some support for the widest part of the shelf because that is the part that's gonna hold most of the weight of my RC crawlers and stuff. Okay, all the pieces are cut. And as you can see, according to my plan that I drew like a child, this thing is coming along very well. It was time to put the pieces together. So first off, I went with the bigger part and glued it together. I had to leave it for about a day to dry and gave myself, uh, this gave myself time to work on the other parts. So I plane out the uh, stock that was pallet wood pieces and this is what is going to form the base, not the base, the down part which will take raising. To install that on those posts I went with half lap joints. So I had to cut half lap joints on both sides, I mean on both pieces. I used table saw to cut half lap joints, I cut a test and checked and went ahead and increased the height of the table saw and cut it again and it actually fit very well. Then I went ahead with the posts and cut half lap joints on those, it was easy because the table saw height was set, adjusted properly and they actually fit very well. Then I had to cut a dado, uh, I believe that's the right word, uh, into the posts. So I used uh, another new long piece because the other pieces were drying, I couldn't use it. And I uh, marked the lines. Now, once again, throughout this project, the squareness was really, really, very important to me and I wanted to make sure everything was nice and square. After that, the pieces were cut properly. I am preparing the top pieces which are going to form the slope. This is, by the way, my very first time to work with slopes and I was really uh, nervous if I made it wrong or not. Then I went ahead with my hand router. Though I built some very nice jigs, but I still wanted to practice using hands, uh, using the router by hand. So I went ahead, uh, traditional way, used different router bits and uh, milled wood and carved two lines one wider and one thinner uh, two lines into each piece this by the way is the piece of pallet wood I'm not using new wood 
and then I rounded uh, the uh, corners, the edges of both pieces so that they will look beautiful. Similarly, I rounded the, uh, the posts, the side posts that are going to hold the whole shelf on the wall. Now the big pieces were ready, I mean the big piece was ready that I glued uh, yesterday. So it was time to put it together, it fit in cut data really nice. One more thing that you want to notice that throughout this project I did not use any kind of nails except that the uh, pieces that, uh, pellet wood pieces that are going to have raisin were used, uh, mounted using two nails on each only. So throughout this project I used only two nails. Here I used jigsaw and chisels to cut a nice little joint but unfortunately it broke with a little mistake. Anyway that wasn't very important because no one can see it, it will sit behind on the wall. Then I sanded the piece, the whole piece, I thought it was a good time to sand it now. I used 80 grit sandpaper on my machine and sanded every piece of uh, the shelf that I built. Yes, 80 grit for now, but later I went with 240 and even finer grits to sand, which you will see uh, in the end of this video. Sanding was fun, but inside part, the, uh, the ones which I uh, carved inside the wood were really difficult to sand, but somehow I managed to do that. Now it was time to put everything together, so I came to a longer shelf that I built previously and put everything on double checked everything then glued the first pieces which are going to take raising the pallet wood pieces and for now I just leave them with uh, clamps once they were good I went with two nails on them so that they will be permanent my belt sander was very useful to make uh, the side posts for uh, the support posts for the wider part of the shelf because it's gonna take all the weight here you see the corner mate that I bought off Banggood. Uh, these pieces are proving very very useful for the squareness and I use them to install the wider piece onto the post exactly 90 degrees. They actually helped me a lot. They were really very hard and tight and you can see me struggling though it's a time lapse but you can still see me struggling to put them up but they, they actually did a very proper joint and exactly 90 degrees very nice and square fit i love the corner mate that i bought off banggood okay so far everything is going very well i did have some uh mistakes and broke a little bit chipped a little bit of wood that i didn't want to but anyway everything is going fine i used the corner mates that i bought off banggood and they are really helping me to hold this piece together exactly 90 degrees I have just checked because the squareness is what I'm really really concerned about for this project uh, so here perfectly squared perfectly squared and this is also needed to be squared it is perfectly squared here and at this side is squared I'm mostly using the glue because the angles and the pieces of stock are not very, uh, how to say, you know, wide or they are pretty thin. So I'm afraid if I drive screws in, they will probably split and I don't want to do that. The glue that I have is really, really strong. Just leave it for 12 hours it will be really very strong now this is day two obviously I have to uh, first join this top slope piece and I thought about bread nails but then I said you know what my glue the wood glue that I bought is really very strong so let's not waste bread nails on this and I just glued everything together and it actually worked because anyway it's not gonna hang it's gonna hold things on top of it then I glued two side support posts as well Raisin is going to be my very first try, so let's prepare the raisin and put in and see how it goes. Finally, it was time for me to put my hands dirty with raisin. This is my very first try to use raisin and raisin art on my projects. So first off, I went ahead, mixed the raisin A and B and then used a blue color. I also had my heat guns to remove the bubbles from raisin. 
blue color is ready as you can see this thing is super fast obviously you're watching a time lapse and I then poured the raisin in those uh, carved lines that I did but I totally forgot one rule <laughs> <laughs> that raisin actually loves to escape through any hole or opening it finds anyway I put the color in I mix it in nicely I do some very nice art here then I went ahead found some pieces of leaves cut them up and you can see I'm gonna spread these pieces of leaves now and put them inside the raisin and now I'll talk about how raisin likes to escape okay excuse the dark picture because I'm in the shadows of this shelf but hey this is my very first try in raisin epoxy raisin and I think I did pretty well given that the wood has holes <laughs> and I just realized raisin loves to escape from each nook and each nook and holes it can find so I drilled a screw here and drilled a screw here so that the raisin will not escape and put plastic down there so my hopefully my <laughs> shelf will not get stuck on this table okay so the wood glue has dried for sure but raisin still needs time will look good will look good and here I can actually form uh, a small piece of uh, another wood so that's why I have left this routed groove here uh, so I can add one more piece and that will become like kind of plate form raisin surprisingly surprisingly took about three days to dry maybe I did not put too much hardener in it anyway the raisin was dried and now it was time to install the slope on top of it so I just calculated its uh, position and then simply wood glue would do the job so I would glue it and uh, these three pieces of thin strips that were left over they formed a very nice design in the middle of these pieces so everything was glued together and it took its time 12 hours now I'm back and I'm sanding it with 240 grit paper and after that even finer sandpaper to sand the whole piece because I plan to color and wax it later so sanding went very well and I drill four holes because these holes are the one which are gonna mount or hold the whole shelf on the wall it's time for the satisfying job that is to color the whole shelf I have only one type of color for now I need to buy more color obviously so I went ahead and colored it there were some broken pieces on which I used wood putty and that is why you can see I'm not coloring that part I did use wood putty and then later I sanded and polished the wood putty and it actually did a very good job I realized the wood putty is very very important in these projects as well coloring is what I love and my kids also love coloring but they were in school and studying so uh, I didn't call them for coloring and I went coloring myself uh, the shelf here now this part was a little tricky to color because I didn't want to color the raisin but then I realized you know what you could color the raisin and then later use a wet piece of cloth to simply clean it up it does not make any difference so I color it without worries and now it was time to uh, to polish it with wax and for which I used my DIY uh, disc polishing machine of uh, cordless drill that I did you can find the video of this on my channel how I built this DIY polishing machine and disc sander using the cordless drill so polishing with wax was nice and it actually gave me a very very good finish very nice and glossy uh, finish on the wood and on each and every piece I added one more coat to polish with wax and it was absolutely beautiful then it was time to come up I had a death star sticker there that I removed and it took a lot of color off my wall so we went ahead and colored the wall again thank you very much Arish my son nine years old he helps me a lot with these projects he helped me with coloring the wall as well after coloring the wall 
it was time to put the shelf so we decided how high the shelf should be because I want to use this shelf to be appearing in the background of my RC videos that I do on other channels by the way don't worry I strictly told him not to look into the laser and myself I wasn't looking into the laser we use this laser leveler that we bought off Banggood and it did a very good job to uh, level everything now we used our new sensor to check if there were any cables, electric cables running in the wall. Unfortunately, the sensor was behaving very strange. I have no idea why. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what went into it. So after confirming where there were no lines, hopefully no power lines, I drilled one hole, I drilled another hole, and there was one corner, that uh, bottom right corner was uh, kind of suspicious, so I didn't drill a hole there. I just used three pieces of screws to hold the whole piece of this floating shelf on the wall and now it was time to set up my RC crawlers they have got a new home now beautiful new home I'm very happy they actually look very good so we took our time to uh, set everything nicely we cleaned the room we put the table back and I will go ahead and I still need some more things to add there like hang RC airplanes down there for a beautiful background well, I'm really happy though it took time, but this is a sweet result right there, a beautiful floating shelf. Alright, my DIY floating shelf is completed. Exactly the way I drew it, as you watched in the beginning of the video, the same design I was able to make it. I was able to do the raisin as well, and now with crawlers, RC cars, little... FPV drones, airplanes, all set up properly and mashallah is looking very very nice. Now I am really not very good at raisin art. This is my very very first try on raisin art. I put some leaves down inside, inside the raisin and they are actually looking very good. I was thinking to put some nails and screws but then I thought you know let's not do too much. Arish is uh, <laughs> Play-Doh Lion is there, my 3D printed Volley is sitting here, and we have a little bird, tweeting bird, it, it used to sing, it still sings, if it have batteries, it's, it sings beautiful songs. Alright, well, thank you very much for watching this video. Obviously our next project is a modern, simple coffee table. Don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button for us. Support us so our channel can grow and obviously and inshallah we'll be bringing you many many more interesting DIY woodworking projects.